Hey guys, so I've got something today which I want to share with you guys which I think is totally awesome. So I picked up some archival varnish. This is a spray varnish by Golden. Um, I did a little bit of research and I'm trying to figure out how can I protect my watercolor paintings. All these guys I have up here I really like and I want to keep them like uh, from being damaged from any types of moisture or anything like that. Everything I could find about how to properly protect one of these is to put a sheet of glass over it, you put it in a, you know, with mat board and a frame, and you call it a day. For me, that didn't feel like enough. I wanted to do a little bit more with that. So with these paintings, I wanted to do something a little bit more experimental. So I did some digging online. How to varnish a watercolor painting. Can you varnish a watercolor painting? and eventually I did find something. On Golden's website, they have a PDF for these guys, and there's a little blurb in that PDF where it talks about um, using this on a watercolor painting. Now, if you didn't already know, you can't use regular varnish on a watercolor painting, mainly because the uh, brush and the varnish are going to smear all the pigment that you've laid down. Watercolor tends to be very delicate, you know, if you uh, spill your coffee on this or something, it's, it's gone. Well, I guess coffee, but if you spill water on it, it's absolutely ruined. So I want to do something to really preserve it, and this is maybe the solution. I'm going to experiment, hopefully not destroy one of these paintings in the process. If I do, at least it'll make it for an interesting video, right? So these varnishes, I have a matte and I have a gloss, and to do this, from Golden's website, um, they're saying that you need to use both. If you use too much of the matte, it's going to be cloudy and kind of whitish. If you use too much of the gloss, it becomes overly shiny. And that's not something that you really want for a watercolor painting. I mean, you could if you want, but that's not something that I want to go for. So the way they explain it on their website is you want six coats of gloss and then you want one coat of matte on top and that way any type of sparkles or anything like that all this uh, metallic powders and everything that we have in here and over here or like any type of like salt crystals things like that that's gonna be the only part of the painting that shines and those metallic powders are important at least for my painting because I like using metallic powders as much as I can I think in most of these I've used some somewhere so I'm hoping these guys are going to solve that problem for me. I could still frame these with the glass sheet in front of them, just as you would like normally would do. But now I have the option of getting an open frame, uh, something that you would usually have just for like an oil painting or an acrylic painting. Um, probably wouldn't want to do it with the paper, but on all of the um, masonite boards that I could do, and I think that would look really, really nice. So, yeah, let's take down a painting and let's see if this works. Fingers crossed, I don't wreck one because I do like them all. Alright guys, so I'm all set up. I just put together a very simple spray box out of just some uh, extra stuff I had laying around. I've got a little riser which you know, used to contain two bottles of wine. And usually I would set up a spray box like this outside, but it's really cold and rather windy outside, and I don't want to mess with that. So I've just got my windows open in my apartment, and I'm going to hopefully not make a stinky mess around the whole place. So I've got my gloss to start, and according to Golden's website, I need six coats of this, and then I've got my matte to finish, and we'll only be needing one coat of that. And most importantly, I have my watercolor piece this one is on a piece of ampersand aqua board. Um, I love this stuff. It can be a little pricey, so whenever you use this, you have to make sure that what you're putting on it, you really like. Um, and this painting, I do really like. So, that in mind, I really don't want to destroy this painting. But there's only one way to test this shit out. I already tested it on a piece of scrap paper, but what can you tell from scrap paper, right? The only way I'm going to tell that this can actually work is to test it on an actual painting. Here we go. Six coats of the gloss. We'll start out with just one coat. Uh, it says to keep it nine inches to a foot away. We want to give it some room to mist. Right, let's push this a little bit further back. The reason for the box is this way any spray 
is not going to go shooting around the room. It's going to kind of waft in this area and settle. Hopefully not go too far all over the place. All right, here we go. So that's one coat. All right, so I just checked on Golden's website and five minutes between coats is way too short. You want 20 minutes between coats. And while the camera was off, I just double checked on here and I could see there was still a lot of like shininess that I didn't like. And that was because it was still wet. So 20 minutes between coats. And because it's been 20 minutes now on my end, Let's do another coat. Not very complicated, it's just time consuming, right? So we got coat three. I'm starting to wonder if six coats is even necessary. You know what, after this third coat, I'll do a close inspection once it's dried, and we'll see if you even need to do that many. I feel like that might be too much. You can maybe argue that I've been doing two coats because I go one direction and then go back. So maybe this counts as six. So you guys can't see this, but I've got a little bit more gloss up here than I do down here. So even though I thought I was gonna call it a day, I'm gonna put just one more coat. So I'm gonna go a little bit, a little bit heavier here, a little bit lighter on this end, just so I get an even distribution. Alright, so I've waited about 20 minutes, maybe it's been about 25, even a little bit longer, and this is mostly dry. It's kind of like tacky dry. So I want to show you guys what this looks like. See that gloss effect on it. Like, this is tacky dry right now, and this looks intensely glossy. It looks the kind of gloss you would expect from an oil painting. And maybe there's a place for that. Um, I don't think I want to keep it that glossy, though, personally. So let's turn this guy around. And we are now going to use, let's see which one is this. This is gloss. So now we're going to use our matte varnish. This is going to be our final coat. We're just doing one of the matte. Um, this should just dull up that gloss. That's really all that we want it to do. Do a little test just to make sure everything's legit. even covering and you can see it this time but by going around these edges and like stopping up here see this is where I went wrong with some of my gloss layers is I stopped in this section and I made it a little thick here so by passing it in both ways I get the heavier concentrations on the side and this is now a very even coat all right so it's been a little over an hour and the uh, varnish is all finished. I think it came out really nice. It's not over glossed. You'll probably notice all of the matte medium that hit the box, it leaves these white marks. So I'm going to say that you definitely, definitely do not want to put more than a single coat of the matte. Uh, all right, guys, so the varnish is all finished. And the end result, I think, came out really, really nice. I did the one coat of matte on top of what ended up being just about six coats of gloss, just as uh, Golden's website suggested. I could say definitively that six coats was a little too much, unnecessary. 
probably two coats of gloss is good enough, but definitely no more than one of the matte. As you can see on the um, cardboard, it does leave a white residue. Just the one coat though, didn't leave anything noticeable, but that, that matte look does look a lot nicer for watercolor painting. Um, this painting now can be put into a uh, frame that does not have glass. It could be put into a frame with glass, not necessary anymore. So a frame that I would use for an acrylic painting or for a oil painting can now work on this guy. I'm gonna be putting these paintings through the same process. I think it's gonna be a little bit different for the two paper paintings, but I'm suspecting it's gonna be very similar. With these two paintings, I'm gonna to have to go and I'm gonna to have to flatten them out first, probably with an iron. They're mostly flat. Using the, um, the Aquawell uh, blocks, they don't get many, um, what do they call, cockles in them or anything like that, so they're usually pretty fine, but just in case, I wanna make sure they're totally flat, and then I'll put them through the same process as this. If I notice any type of, like, weirdness with it, if it starts to buckle or anything like that, I'll let you guys know not to do that, but I suspect that it will be just like this and it will come out very nice. Um, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video and you want to test this stuff out yourself, I do have links below to those two bottles of um, varnish and please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any comments or suggestions for future videos, let me know. I'll see you guys next week.